her name is Dr. Ventress, and she's a um, psychologist, and she helps get the teams together that are going into the shimmer, which is sort of this unknown, but it's um, the sort of um, barrier that's creeping closer and closer to civilization. Um, and none of the teams they've sent in so far have come back. And so she is joining the team because she just there's just so many times that she can do that without it taking its you know toll and um, she sort of has to know for herself at this point. I read a lot of like books in terms of like psychology and also there's a lot of like dream stuff in this that I I was intrigued by and I spent a lot of time with Alex and uh, certain bits of music and different, I uh, just all different kinds of um, like uh, people going into war and into battle and into people going into the unknown into places that are, they are not really prepared for in one way or another. They may be physically prepared but not mentally prepared. Like what what happens under those extreme conditions and circumstances? nobody does know because no one's come out so that's what they're going into and they discover all these strange morphings inside um, and it's very beautiful but also you don't know what's safe and what isn't and what's dangerous and what's benign um, and that it keeps creeping closer and closer and so we don't know if the, the need is to destroy it or to let it be we don't know even what it is, and we only know where it stems from or where it began. So the object is to get to sort of the center of it. Well, I loved um, Ex Machina so much. I saw it twice, and, um, and then I read the script, and um, I knew that Natalie was doing it, and I've been just a fan of hers for a very long time. She's so honest and just deep, and her, um, I, I really just admire her so very much, and um, I loved the idea of doing something that was all women. Um, and Alex's vision is so interesting to me, like what goes on in his mind and how he creates these worlds that are so dramatic and beautiful and terrifying, um, but feel possible in some way. You know, it was really, um, even though the the environment was challenging, we were actually in the woods and uh, we were in a tent a lot of the time between takes and um, it was an incredibly good group of women, just really strong, really funny, um, I mean, to the point of like being hilarious and also just smart and um, just, um, kind and lovely. I mean, it was a really great group of women. And so it was, it was great acting with them. It was great hanging out and being, you know, in a tent with them and then having dinners together in town. It was really nice. It was great. It's great when it's a really small ensemble like that and something about it, especially if it's a nice group, which this was an incredibly nice group. I mean, walking through all that mud with those like heavy backpacks and like some of the women had like no problem at all. Like for me, it was, it was uh, really <laughs> rigorous. Um, but uh, yeah, and sometimes like the things that would happen sort of off camera before we would go into something very dramatic, um, that would be so funny just to see like Tessa and Gina would be sort of, they'd have this whole like dance worked out and these characters that they were doing that had nothing to do with the movie at all, but with these machine guns. And um, it's just like, there was a lot of levity, strangely enough. And it was really, it was nice, you know, it was nice to have that kind of balance in the depths and the darkness of the jungles. I hope that people will be really intrigued and uh, I hope it will provoke a lot of um, interesting conversation and, um, that people want to see it again to see if they can like where the clues are early on and things like that and I uh, I mean I think it's a disturbing movie in many ways and an upsetting movie but it's also um, kind of inspiring in a certain way I think 
If the shimmer were real, I don't think I would be going inside. <laughs> Fortunately, in this, like, you have to volunteer. I would not be. <laughs> if it were real, I would not be volunteering to go in there. Um, yeah, I don't want to see any of that. <laughs> hey, don't close out. Stay with me as I have more sci-fi for you. Did you know that Stanley Kubrick destroyed almost all of his props and sets from 2001 A Space Odyssey because he didn't want them to be used in any lesser science fiction films? The spacesuit costumes in Ridley Scott's Alien were so poorly ventilated that the cast was passing out from CO2 inhalation. And Terminator 2 Judgment Day is the only sequel in the history of Hollywood to date to win an Academy Award when its prequel was not even nominated. What's your favorite sci-fi film? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Bye-bye.